Welcome to Introduction to Write Facts Training from Advantage Technologies. My name is Skip Davis, and this is an introduction to Write Facts Email Gateways. There are three different types of email gateways that are supported in Write Facts Lotus Notes, SMTP, and Exchange. Now, in this training, we will learn about the SMTP gateway. This can be used with a variety of email servers that support SMTP and POP3. Now, to add your initial email gateway on your Write Facts server, you'll need to go to the control panel and open up the WriteFacts email gateway icon. Now go down here and click on add gateway. You'll see that there are selections for Lotus Notes, Microsoft Exchange, and SMTP. You may show SMTP with Lotus Notes or Microsoft Exchange or both. So let's select the SMTP POP3 and click on select. And you'll see we've added the gateway. We click on there. And the first place we'll go is to the general tab. Now in here, we can edit the from message that will appear in the from field of messages delivered to your SMTP server. Next, we can choose the direction in which we want the gateway to process messages. We can select both, which will enable both inbound and outbound messaging to the SMTP server. Inbound only will allow faxes and notifications to be sent to the SMTP server, but no messages from the POP3 server. If you'll only be faxing from your SMTP server, but not receiving faxes inbound, then you'll want outbound with notifications or outbound without notifications. Okay, next we'll set the frequency that WriteFax will check for either inbound or outbound faxes or notifications. We can also set the event log level. This can be used to limit the events that are recorded in the event log or increased for troubleshooting purposes. There are three checkboxes. First, remote email gateway service. Only check this if you're using the email gateway on a server other than the WriteFax server. Second, use fax util user information. This will use the information from the sending user's account in fax util to populate the from username field on the cover sheet. Finally, include fax with notifications. With this checked, you can select either TIFF or PDF. You can also choose first page if you only want to choose the first page of the fax to be sent with the notification. The server timeout slide bar specifies how long the client should wait for a response from the email server. On the SMTP tab, we can enter the SMTP server name. In other words, email.company.com or we can use the IP address for the SMTP server. By default, SMTP uses port 25. WriteFax supports encryption. It supports the TLS SSL encryption type. If your SMTP server requires authentication, check the box, then enter select the logon using the same settings as the incoming server, or enter another account and password. Now, on the POP3 tab, we set up for outbound faxing. Again, we can use the server name or the IP address. The POP3 server does not need to be the same as the SMTP server. The default port for POP3 is 110, and the same encryption, TLS SSL, is supported. For WriteFax to be able to retrieve faxes from the POP3 server, you'll need to set up an email account mailbox. In the account name field, enter the name for the mailbox and the mailbox password in the password field. Leave the send APOP password field set to auto. The maximum number of messages to retrieve field will assign how many messages can be brought over from the POP3 server at one time. 
use PCI Converter and remove email headers checkboxes or check by default. If you, the use IETF fax addressing is left unchecked, then WriteFax can accept either IETF or WriteFax addressing schemes. Finally, you can designate a specific WriteFax user account to send out faxes from email accounts that do not have a corresponding WriteFax account. If you do not choose this option, then those faxes will send out through the default account. Your SMTP gateway is now ready to send and receive faxes. If you are sending faxes out from your SMTP gateway and you're using Exchange, there are steps that you will need to take to enable Exchange to do POP3. First, we need to go into services on the Hub Transport server and enable the Exchange POP3 service and then set the startup type to automatic. This is disabled by default in Exchange. So here you see we have Microsoft Exchange POP3. We do have it running and it is set to automatic. Next, you'll want to create a mailbox that will be used exclusively for WriteFax. This mailbox should be hidden from the gal to prevent the possibility of someone accidentally sending regular mail to this mailbox. So we go into mailboxes and for this server we have created a account called POP3FAX. Uh, to prevent the exchange categorizer from resolving the recipient information we need to create a transport rule. Exchange moves the messages to the specified POP3 account. Because the message is moved, any email addresses listed in the CC and DCC fields are ignored. Only the POP3 account receives the message. Now, for the purposes of this training, we will be using Exchange 2013. To create the transport rule, we'll need to open the Exchange Admin Center. From here, We'll select mail flow and then rules. We'll click on the plus sign to create a new rule. First, we'll give the rule a name that'll make it easily recognizable. Now we'll go under apply this rule if and select the recipient is. Now here you'll see a list of all of the mailboxes will come up and you'll select the mailbox that you created to do your SMTP faxing. For us, we go to and down just a little bit longer, pop three facts. We add and okay. Under do the following, we select redirect the message to, and again, we select that same account. Add and OK. From here, we leave all of the other selections at their defaults and simply click Save. If you use Outlook, you can install the Outlook Advanced Form on a client workstation. Now on the File tab, there will be a WriteFax entry. Click on this and you'll see options for WriteFax Server, and SMTP conversion. The WriteFax server options will allow you to designate the WriteFax server that you use to send faxes and determine whether you use NT authentication or a WriteFax user ID. The SMTP conversion option will allow you to designate the fax gateway internet mailbox. 
Now here you'll see we're using PFAX at atny.biz, which is the email address for the POP for eFax that we created in Exchange. Now we'll go back to the home screen and you'll see there's a send fax button in the write fax portion of your home tab ribbon. Click on this and it will open up a section where you can fill out your name, company, fax number, and billing codes, if any. So we set Helen Test Company Advantage and fax number 5551212. We go down and we click on the two, and we'll see up here the fax has now been addressed properly to send via the SMTP gateway. I'd like to thank you for choosing Advantage Technologies and happy faxing.